Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another Lenovo laptop to take a look at. This is their IdeaPad 530S. Uh, they sent in the 15-inch version for us to look at today. And we're going to be seeing what this laptop is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Again, a 15.6 inch display on this one running at 1080p. It's an IPS display, so it looks nice and sharp, uh, pretty decent viewing angles, and it's also uh, got a glare-free finish on it. Uh, it is not a touchscreen, though, so you'll have to be using the trackpad down here. The display has a good amount of range to it here, as you can see. You can have it go almost flat to uh, just about any other position you want. Good amount of tightness to the hinge here. It feels uh, pretty nice overall. Inside, it has an Intel i5-8250U processor. This is a quad-core chip that uh, is pretty much running at the same power levels as last year's dual-core chip, so it should give you a nice bump over a laptop that's at about this price point in classification. It has 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. The RAM is upgradable, but there's only one RAM slot inside. We took it apart on the Extras channel to show you that. Uh, so the RAM is running in single channel configuration, which might impact a little bit of performance, which we'll get into in a few minutes. Uh, this one is configured with a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. That is a PCIe drive, so you'll get a uh, decent performance out of it. And you can also upgrade that if you want. You can, again, just take it apart here uh, from the bottom and have at it. Now, this one, as configured at the moment, is 849 uh, but a couple of days ago, it cost less than that. I think it was around $799 or so. So you might want to shop around a little bit for this when you are looking, uh, because I think this will uh, likely be available at a number of different price points with a number of different configurations. They even have one that has a GPU built in. It looks like there's a choice between an MX150 or MX130 GPU. Uh, this one we're looking at today does not have a GPU on board. It's strictly uh, Intel-based graphics. It weighs 3.6 pounds or 1.6 kilograms. A little bit heavy, but it is a 15-inch device. It's all aluminum, so it's got a, a very nice fit and finish to it. It feels uh, pretty uh, kind of premium, actually, in its overall build quality, and I was pleased with how it felt in the hand. Uh, this part here around the screen is plastic, but the rest of it uh, is all metal. It's got a little webcam up here at the top bezel, 720p, nothing spectacular, but good enough for getting the job done. Uh, there's also a number of ports on here, including your power port right here. This is a full-size HDMI output. You can go out to 4K on these devices. I think it'll run a 4K 60 hertz display, actually. Uh, right here, you've got a USB 3.0 port, a full-size port, and next to that is a USB Type-C port. However, this USB-C port does not support power delivery nor video output. A lot of laptops now support all of those functions through their USB-C ports. This one is data only, and it is the slower Gen 1 speed out of it as well. So just bear that in mind. This is not a multifunction port. Right here, you've got a combo headphone microphone jack. On the other side, you've got a full-size SD card reader, uh, but your SD cards will stick out quite a bit when they go into it there, so you'll probably want to uh, not walk around with those in there too much. And you've got another full-size USB 3 port over there. Keyboard is very nice, as most of these Lenovo laptops are. This is their standard IdeaPad layout. Nice size keys, really nice travel to them. Very pleased with the keyboard. I'm also pleased with the trackpad. It's a click pad, very accurate, and uh, feels very premium there. And you also have a fingerprint reader on it as well. There is a fan built into this because this is a regular i5 processor. The fan is a little bit on the noisier side to us, at least from our testing. It's got a bit of a high-pitched sound to it that you'll hear from time to time when it kicks on. Generally, it doesn't kick on until it's really under load, but you will be hearing the fan on this one while you are using it. And again, a little bit of a high-pitched uh, noise to it 
uh, that some folks may not like. Uh, we'll cover some of the thermals in a little bit. So that's the overall hardware. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. So we're going to kick things off with some web browsing. We went over to my YouTube channel first and watched a 1080p 60 frames per second video. Uh, we had a couple of skip frames when it first got started using the Edge browser. I think it might have just had a little bit of a bump or something. It was fine after that, so I don't think you're going to have any issues playing back video from any popular website on this device. Websites themselves also ran very nicely on here too. You can see we went over to the nasa.gov page and browsed around. Uh, this was on Wi-Fi. It has uh, AC wireless built in with a two by two radio. So you'll get really decent performance out of this if your uh, Wi-Fi is running on the modern AC standard. We also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test and there we got a score of 143 on the version one test and about uh, 78.4 on the version two test. Uh, this puts it right in line with what we've seen on other 8th generation i5 processors like this. So I think all the things that you might do browsing the web should uh, be perfectly fine on here as they should be with a modern Intel i5 chip. We also ran Microsoft Word and did a little desktop publishing. That was also effortless on here too. So uh, all in, that quad core processor is going to do, I think, quite well for you. Uh, battery life doing those kinds of tasks should get you about six and a half hours or so. Uh, so you're not going to get a full workday perhaps out of this device. So you'll want to probably keep some uh, power outlets nearby just to give it a boost every once in a while. Uh, so again, about six and a half hours doing that kind of stuff. Uh, you'll see less than that gaming and uh, other activities that might stress the processor more. And speaking of gaming, let's take a look at that now. We're going to kick things off with the Java version of Minecraft, the one that most people still run. Uh, they were getting frame rates between 85 and 100 frames per second running at 1080p with the OptiFine performance enhancer plugged in. Not too bad there at all. And we also booted up Fortnite and we're seeing about 25 to 40 frames per second with that game. Of course, if you had the GPU, you would probably do a little better both in frame rate and graphical quality. But if you want to play a quick game or something every once in a while uh, casually, this is probably not a bad way to do it. And we tried out Rocket League, lowest settings at 1080p. And there we got frame rates between 40 and 55 frames per second. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 7,345, which puts it pretty much where we expected it to fall, given what it has inside for a processor. But we've seen a big leap over the last year or two with its CPU performance on that test, just given that the prior generation of this chip had two less cores than this one does. So it's able to process more things simultaneously than you could in the past. And that will, of course, show up on tests like this. So not bad, but I think if you are looking for a laptop to play games on, choosing one with a discrete GPU is going to be the better pick. And on the 3D Mark stress test, which measures how well the laptop does under load, we got a passing score of 97.5%. That means that the fan on board is able to keep the processor cool enough under load so it doesn't slow down when it does have a lot going on. So it was good to see it uh, pass that test with that score. So even though that fan will be noisy, it will keep the computer cool, which is very important for consistent performance. And we also stressed its video playback capabilities running a 140 megabit per second 4K HEVC file on Kodi, and it was able to decode that video just fine with no drop frames or anything else. Again, another advancement of Intel chips over the last couple of years is putting more advanced video decoding capabilities into their processors and here it's running just fine. And I know for some folks that Windows just doesn't cut it anymore. You want to go to something else like Ubuntu and we've got Ubuntu 18.04 running here with everything appearing to work as you would hope it would. So video is working, sound is working, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are also working too here. So I think this could be a, a pretty decent Linux device if you are looking to run an operating system other than Windows on it. It had no trouble getting this going for us. So overall, I think it's a nice mid-range laptop. Uh, the price swings on this are pretty crazy, so I think you want to shop around a little bit. Uh, again, right now we saw this at $849 on the Lenovo website, but it was much less just a couple of days ago. So be on the lookout for that. I think you will 
uh, be able to get a good value if you shop around. So definitely do your research and I would suggest looking at a number of different retailers including some brick and mortar ones to see which versions of this laptop they're getting. Uh, so you can get the best price with the best configuration. My only gripe with it is just the USB-C port on here. I think they uh, really need to get consistent across their product line in providing a USB-C port that does everything the technology has to offer. Uh, there are some great docking stations that we've looked at here on the channel where you can take a single cable, get power in and video and data out, and unfortunately this port is not going to work with a docking station given it doesn't support all the functions that USB Type-C supports. But otherwise, I think it's a pretty solid offering with a decent uh, Intel processor from the current generation installed. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.